Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds. Welcome back. I'm Gavin Webber, and I'm the host of the show, and hopefully today i'll be answering your cheese making questions now it looks like all the volumes are okay and it's all good it's great to see everybody here in the chat already we've got 31 people watching which is fabulous uh now shout out to all of the members uh so all of the youtube members and patrons big shout out to stacy and the Solar Stalker Harvey for signing up this week to YouTube memberships. Thank you for your financial support. Not forgetting, of course, uh, all of the patrons. <clears throat> uh, thank you to one and all for supporting the show on a monthly basis. Without your financial support, there wouldn't be much of a show. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Um, now, just a little bit of housekeeping. The video is coming up this weekend, or this week. Uh, well, should I say, the video is in production. Hang on, let me just bring that up. So, on the Trello board this week, uh, currently in editing, we have Baby Swiss, but that's going to take a little bit more longer because... Um, uh, it's going to go through its warm phase. It's just finished its initial cold phase and it's going to start its uh, warm phase for two weeks, <clears throat> maybe three weeks, to get some eye development. Uh, also, we've got some goat's cheddar, which is going to be vacuum-packed today, and I've just got to film that little bit there. So that should be fun. Um, so they're the two in editing. As far as shooting a video, uh, this one I'm going to shoot tomorrow which is uh, answering viewer questions. I've gone back into the uh, the comment section and pulled out some of the some good um, questions and some funny ones as well. So it should be quite entertaining. Uh, so that'll be coming out. I'll be shooting that tomorrow. So hopefully I'll have that up tomorrow as well for members and patrons. Um, I was planning to uh, get some, uh, so, sorry, to make a balls this week. Uh, however, I'm trying to source the goat's milk again that I used for the goat's cheddar, which is um, from Caldermere Farms, which is a, uh, a dairy down in South Gippsland. They do goat's milk, and I tell you what, it's quite good. It set a really good curd. So there's some of the uh, cheeses that are coming up. Uh, sorry they're taking a bit longer than normal, but I want to get the whole process uh, not including the taste test, or maybe with a baby Swiss, we'll see how we go. But they're just taking a little bit longer. Um, and I'd rather with some of these more complicated cheeses, especially the baby Swiss, I want to get all the steps in the video uh, before I release it. So nobody has any issues when they make it themselves. Uh, as Anthony has said, it takes time. Sorry, it takes a while to make a baby. Indeed it does. Uh, and speaking of babies, I'm a grandfather again. So um, I'm a grandfather to baby Amelia. Uh, my daughter Amy and her partner Dan uh, are the proud parents of Amelia, born uh, two days ago on Thursday, Friday. So <laughs> thanks for all the little congratulations in the chat. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really good. I'm, I'm chuffed a bit. Um, haven't seen um, baby Amelia yet because they're about five hours drive away, so um, we will get there eventually. Um, but uh, there's lots of other people around to support the happy parents. So there you go. Uh, uh, very cute too. She's gorgeous. Anyway, um, what else? Oh, uh, later on in the show after the gallery, I'm going to throw some memberships, free memberships your way. Uh, which will give you early access to uh, to videos so at least 24 hours before, plus uh, sneaky behind the scenes in the uh, on the community tab. Those who uh, follow YouTube on uh, the on your smartphone or an app, um, you'll get it in your feed. So, 
Uh, thanks for all the congratulations, by the way. Lovely. Uh, right, moving right along. Let's say good day to uh, a whole bunch of curd nerds that have joined the stream. Uh, good day to uh, Shauna. I think you were the first one this morning. And good day to uh, Becky and Tracy. I think you're there again. Um, who else we got? We got Stacy. Hello, Stacy. Long time. Uh, Stacy shot me a whole bunch of photos at four o'clock this morning, which I had to quickly uh, scramble and put into the gallery. Stacy says, "Hey, cheese peeps! I'm so excited to be a participant now. Uh, I've been a long time, uh, four years plus watcher, and I've made 13 cheeses so far, but not in a couple of years at least. Um, that's fantastic, and you'll see the photos that uh, of the cheeses that state." Uh, Stacy has made so yeah very cool um, also got uh, Kathy hello Kathy lovely to see you again uh, the chairman we've got Valerie hello to you both uh, Anthony g'day Anthony and uh, thanks for your photo this week um, who else we got Michael and Jenny we got Monica hello to both of you we got uh, Eddington Ville on C uh, hopefully you can see it now that would be good. Uh, who else we got? We got Liz in New Zealand. Liz, thanks for your photo, mate. Uh, Monica and Monica says, uh, Gavin Webber, that's me. Uh, I received your book last Monday. It's fantastic. Thanks for the work you've put in. Thank you for purchasing it, Monica. And there's been a bit of a run on the books, which is fantastic. This is the. Uh, the paper versions, let me just bring that up oh, so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. Oh, I'm popping over to uh, Gavin Kim's shop. Oh, there we go, Little Green Workshops. So popping over to the, to the cheese making supplies section and checking out the books. Where's the books? Here we are. <coughs> um, Monica is, uh, I think she's talking about the bundle and I've sold 20, 20 books over the weekend so far. Uh, I had to print some more off yesterday, so there's a few more in stock. So this is the Keep Calm I Make Cheese bundle, the spiral bound version, which I bind myself uh, lovingly, of course. And uh, let's just pop that in the chat in case people don't have the link. Um, but yeah, thank you to everybody who has um, purchase some of those um, I don't think I'll be on the uh, bestseller list Anthony uh, <laughs> uh, because you know I'm self-published and all that sort of stuff I think you have to go with a publishing house to be on the bestseller list anyway that aside it's uh, it was a labor of love and hopefully I bought all the recipes that I can obviously that because I've still producing recipes um, and variations therein. Uh, I have obviously recipe cards for every single one that's come out after the second book um, and you can get those little green workshops as well, the printable recipe cards, they're PDFs that you can just print out and, um, and use. Now um, <clears throat> they will at some time be included in the third volume uh, I don't know how thick it is. It could be just an addendum to the second one. I'm not sure, but uh, I'd rather make it a third volume to have them all separate. But yeah, very cool. Um, we got a sick person. Uh, Patricia. Sorry about that. Hello from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Homesick with COVID this Easter, I fear, but feeling not too bad. Hopefully you got all your vaccines and it's kind of helping a little bit. I haven't... Um, Kim and I haven't had COVID yet. We've had six boosters or something, something like that. But uh, yeah, we haven't caught it yet, which is good. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, yeah, my son has had it twice already. And he, even though he lives at home, he's managed to quarantine himself away so his mother and father didn't catch it. So that'll be good. Um... Okay, so if you've got any cheese making questions, pop them into the chat. That would be lovely. There's a few people I haven't said hello to. Hello to um, Nina, uh, and thanks for the photo, and Debbie, Herb, uh, who else we got? 
um, Henry and David, Pink Floyd, uh, Jennifer, and oh, Upbeat Health, uh, Creative Pop, Prop. <laughs> um, okay, so let's put some, we've got some questions. Let's go. Um, Upbeat Health. Uh, hi, Gavin. Thanks for answering my cheese press questions on the phone last week. Uh, when, compre when pressing with a compression spring, do you have to keep tightening the spring over the 12 hours to keep the pressure? Uh, yeah, keep up the pressure, I think. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, so, uh, great question. Yes, Jenny. Uh, especially during the initial presses, because... As, a compre as the cheese compresses, the spring opens up again. So you just got to keep tightening it a little bit. That's why uh, usually there's a couple of initial presses just to form the rind um, uh, slightly until you hit it with the big hard press at the end. Um, usually during that big hard press at the end, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, contract or expand anymore, usually. Uh, but during those initial couple, um, then I just retighten at about the 15 minute mark and it seems to work out okay. So ho hopefully that helps. Um, uh, creative Prop says, my aged cheddar is starting to grow mold. Yep. Uh, is it a lost cause or can I save it or is it safe mold? Okay, as long as it's on the outside, on the rind, that's fine perfectly fine you should see some cheeses commercial cheeses before they sell them they actually put them in a big tub of brine and scrub them with a big scrubbing brush to get all the mold off so mold growth on the outside of cheese is not a bad thing um, I've done a whole YouTube short on the on the thing about mold especially during affinage you can keep it at bay using a, um, a sanitized cloth and um, uh, some a simple brine solution. If worse comes to worse, you can add a little bit of vinegar, white vinegar or uh, apple cider vinegar to the brine solution and that will get rid of uh, any of the mold. And yeah, sure, it may grow back again. Depends on your uh, the conditions in your ripening area. If the sanitation of the ripening box is not uh, as good as it should be because sometimes mold gets a little the lip of the lid and uh, sometimes in, to, in between the little grates of the mat if you haven't um, sanitized that properly. Um, and then, yeah, the mould may come back. But, yeah, just keep keep it at bay. Uh, if the mould dries out on the rind and the rind's fairly dry, um, then, uh, then it's easier to brush it off than to wipe it off with brine because when you're wiping with brine, you're adding salt into the cheese as well, uh, which tends to dry it out. Um... So yeah, if once you got all the mold at bay, you could probably just uh, uh, vacuum pack or um, or wax the cheese. If you're using cloth banding, yes, it's it's natural to have um, uh, to have mold on the outside of the cloth banding. In fact, if you had a looked at uh, last week's gallery on last week's episode, uh, you'll see that there was a cloth banded cheddar in the gallery by Lloyd. Uh, and uh, Lloyd showed the various stages of peeling back the cloth banding and uh, cleaning up the cheese uh, for presenting on a, on his platter. So, there you go. Um, uh, Sean says, if you increase a recipe size by X percent, should you also increase the brining time by X percent? Uh, yes, indeed, because the bigger the volume of cheese, the more time in the salt that you'll need. So, yeah, do the same. So, um, uh, I always, like, the, a lot of the recipes in a lot of the cheese books are, you know, four gallons or 16 litres, and uh, I rarely can accommodate that in my kitchen. Um, so I scale the recipe back to about 10 litres or two and a half gallons. Uh, and I scale back the uh, the brining time as well, uh, and sometimes the maturation time uh, of the cheese, just to adjust to the smaller uh, wheel size. Um, 
Monica says, um, I only started making cheese in January. I've made about nine cheeses. Just had my first blown one, not sure why. Um, yeah, Monica, you're the, the, the telltale, telltale signs of a blown cheese, late blown anyway, is a fissure down the middle. Um, if it's just gas production uh, and you've used a gas producing culture, then usually that's okay. Um, however, if you just used a, a normal mesophilic culture or thermophilic culture without any gas production, and it has eyes in it, then it's a good chance that it could be contaminated as well, especially when that style of cheese doesn't have eyes. Um, now, the, a blown cheese, if it's got a fissure in the middle, and you'll see a picture in the uh, gallery of a, of a late blown cheese, it's due to a buildup of butyric acid. Um, usually butyric acid uh, is, uh, is uh, a sure sign that the the cow was fed on silage which is a fermented grass uh, during winter uh, and sometimes that causes late blown cheeses or in low acid cheeses like uh, Edam and Howder which have been washed washed curd cheeses um, they tend to late blow as well um, so yeah so that's some of the things um, Patricia says, my inquisitive husband asked me a cheese question that I couldn't answer, so maybe you can. How long does a cheddar need to be aged before it's considered old? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, there are categories. Uh, and so cheddar goes from, well, I suppose mild, which would be about three months. These are guesses, by the way, at the moment. There are probably an official list. Um, Let's let's see if I can find an official list. Um, uh, okay, right. Cheddar ages. Okay. Alrighty, here it goes. This is from Wisconsin Cheese. Um, let me have my guess before I start. So, uh, mild about three months. Tasty about six months. Uh, I would say, what's the next one? Vintage, yeah, which is old, would be about 12 months, and extra mature or uh, would be about 18 months. Let's have a look what the interweb says. Um, so it says the average aged cheddar is aged from 12 to 18 months, although some cheddars can be aged up to six years or longer. Uh, as it's aged, cheddar must be kept at a constant temperature, blah, 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 blah. In Wisconsin, some cheddar cheeses are aged up to 20 years. Um, right, hang on. The Cheese Brothers say... Here we are. There's a list. Is there a list? Oh, here we go. Main types of cheddar. Did I get it right? Mild? Yes, I did. Well, that's good. One to three months. Hey, I'm pretty good there. Sharp. All right, sharp, not mature. Uh, three to six months. Extra sharp six months to 12 months and vintage is more than 12 months there you go um there you go there's the different categories of cheddar i was very close so i can't i reckon i did pretty well there very nice um uh, kathy has a question uh does winter milk taste different than summer milk my cheeses taste like wet hay lately um, yes, milk will change over the lactation cycle uh, up front and early. Usually there is a lot more uh, f a lot more protein in the milk at the start of the lactation cycle. And then at the end of the lactation cycle, there's less fat, more protein. Uh, and this can change the taste of the milk. Uh, obviously, winter milk, it depends on where you, you live. If you're in a temperate climate that doesn't have snow and the like then usually um, animals will graze on grass all year round and there shouldn't be a hell of a lot of um, change in the taste of the milk um, having said that when you think about cheeses like um, a lot of the swiss style cheeses made with thermophilic cultures uh, the uh, 
Uh, the cows go up into the alpine areas and graze on uh, wild meadow, which has lots of flowers and herbs and grasses and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and they and they milk them all the way through the um, the summer, uh, spring, summer to autumn, and then let them dry out in uh, in winter. And they don't they just feed them hay because it's snowing. Uh, so that they they just don't use that milk. So they they'll use the milk from the um, from the uh, the the warmer months, if that makes sense, when there's good pasture. Alrighty. Um, Hopefully that answered your question, Kathy. Next one is from uh, Creative Props. It says, good to know. Thank you, Gavin. Have a fantastic day. I need to go get a brisket ready for Easter. All righty. Have fun then. Um, uh, David says, uh, using your recipe, I made the double cream brie. The bloom is coming along great. I have it at 53 degrees Fahrenheit and 93 humidity. Uh, at what point should I wrap and place the cheese in the cooler environment? Environment. Uh, David, once the bloom is all over the cheese is when you wrap it. So you got a consistent um, uh, bloom, white bloom all over the cheese. Uh, usually with a brie, if it's a bit bigger, um, then it tends to be around the 10 to 21 day mark. So it depends on the environment. I think you've got it at a decent humidity. So the white mold should be growing quite well. Uh, but yeah, once it's all over the cheese and it's time to wrap it and then you can put it into a cooler environment to age even further. Uh, and you shouldn't, and once you're at that cooler environment, like between four and uh, seven degrees Celsius, uh, you shouldn't have too many issues. So um, thanks for answering, ask, asking your question. Becky says, uh, when I was growing up, cheddar had to be three years old before it was considered mature or sharp. Nowadays, it seems like marketing dictates things like six months is mature. I don't consider that mature. Yeah, I prefer the uh, the, the older, at least a year, uh, Becky. But, you know, the thing is, since we were kids, I'm not sure how old you are, but since I was a kid... Uh, the population on this planet has ballooned about at 6 billion people uh, since I was born. I think when I was born in 1964, show my age now, I am a grandpa, three times now. Um, the, I think the population was 2 billion people. Now we're up to, what, nearly 8? So, uh, the you know, cheese, I don't know if cheese consumption has kept up. So, uh, it's a little bit harder the the producers want to get money. We got to get money makes the world go around, apparently. Uh, and um, yeah, they're selling the cheeses early, so uh, it's suffering a little bit. Anyway, um, Jim, g'day, Jim. Lovely to see you. Uh, Monica says, um, "Oh, it was a Jarlsberg, definitely late blown. I use shop bought milk." Uh, yeah, look, sometimes that happens. Like I said, if it's in the win if the milk's in the winter and the cows are fed on silage, then there's a good indication that it's late bone. Um, Anthony says, uh, like their wording, I will refer to myself as vintage as I get older. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely vintage. <laughs> Epsilon 81. Sorry I can't watch the screen stream today. Um, I'm having some family problems. I'll watch it tomorrow if I get the chance. Hopefully, I'll be in the next one. Goodbye for now, Curd Nerds. Hopefully, everything works out, whatever it may be. Dominic says, Hi, Gavin. How are you doing? Uh, waiting for you in Castlemaine to do a Mimolet, Mimolet taste test. Uh, good news, Dominic. Uh, and I haven't shared this with you privately. I will be in Castlemaine for my birthday in May. And we are intending on visiting the shop where you buy the long paddock uh, cheese uh, in their little shop. So I will be visiting there, I think it's Thursday the 23rd of May. Kim's planning it all, so it'll be my 60th birthday. So if you're there, that'd be fantastic. But um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, I suppose. So yeah, that'll be, um, that'll be cool. So there you go, Dominic. I'll be up in Castlemaine in May. Um, all being well. Um, 
I'll tell you what, come hell or high water, I'll still be there. Don't you worry about that. Um, Anina says, has a question. Can you recommend a brand of humidity gauge? Uh, the one I've been using died in the fridge, I think, for moisture. Ha, <laughs> how ironic. Um, yeah, look, the, uh, the Inkbird one has a humidity thing on it, I think. There's a humidity controller uh, that does gauge humidity. I think somebody said something. Oh, Anthony has. Uh, he says, Inkbird is the one I use. It's a humidity controller. You don't have to use the controller part. Uh, I also use an Inkbird temperature controller. I haven't had any problem. Yeah, there is a model of um, Inkbird. I think 308 is the heating and cooling version that you plug into your fridge in, into the cooling one. But also they sell a humidity controller as well. But you can just put the gauge in and it tells you, uh, put the probe in and it tells you what the humidity pardon me, of the fridge is. I think it can connect via Wi-Fi as well. I think it has an app. Um, so you can go and check that out. Um, Anthony says, we reached 8 billion uh, people on the planet in November. What's that? Oh, November 2022. So what's that? Two years ago. So it's 8 point something billion humans now. So yeah. Uh, Dominic says, uh, okay, so contact me, and if it's a Thursday, we can visit the factory for sure. I will do that, mate, closer to the date. So uh, I think I'm going to take a camera, and uh, we'll get some nice shots, a little bit of a video. I'll taste the uh, the mimolette and uh, have a look at the factory as well. Very cool. I'm, I'm excited, Dominic. I specifically told him that we're going to Castle Maine for my 60th birthday. So we're staying in a little... Um, uh, it's not an Airbnb, you know, one of those uh, cottage-style stayovers. It's fully equipped, everything. Um, but we will be coming into Castle Main for our meals. I don't think it's very far. I think it's about five minutes out of town or something. So Kim's got it all organised, so it's a big good fun. Henry G says, um, Hi, Gavin, I'm making Emmentaler your recipe while watching you today. Oh, well done, Henry. Hopefully it turns out all right. Um, just keep an eye on it during the warm phase as it starts to puff up. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can wax the cheese first and let it expand with the cheese. Uh, or you can keep it in a ripening box, keep the humidity up so the cheese expands. And then after the expansion phase um, at the warming warm period, then uh, just wax or vacuum pack it because it won't grow any further once you put it back into the cheese cave at 13 degrees Celsius. Anyway... Um, Anthony says, I went through my uh, through many senses for the raspberry pie that started to give false readings due to the high humidity. Uh, another funny one. Um, Stacy says, can you describe mimolette? Yes. It's a French cheese. Uh, it's in the, I think it's in the Alsace region of France, on the border of France and Germany. Um, and it's in a ball shape and it's very orange in color however it's covered it's matured in straw uh, and in the straw are millions and millions of cheese mites and these cheese mites eat into the surface of the rind of the cheese giving it a particular flavor um and uh, yeah it is very orange in color let's let's just see if i can pull it up um, I will pull. I haven't made it because I don't have any cheese mites. Um, uh, Mimolet. Is there a photo? Yes, there's lots of photos. Here we go. Alrighty, so Mimolet looks like. That's a big photo. There we go. Uh, okay, that's the Wikipedia version. So it's ball shaped like this. And like I said, it's orange, but all these little pits and stuff are from cheese mites, which are all uh, brushed off. There's another photo here of the rind cut away. And you can see the, there's the rind there. Pretty gnarly stuff. But like I said, I haven't tasted it yet. But it should be uh, quite an amazing cheese. Dominic has actually bought one in from France, where they're made, of course. Uh, he went on a bit of holiday. He's still got some, apparently. So that should be great fun. Uh, yeah, the mite, there's another cheese in um, Germany called... Um, oh, 
uh, Wurtz, Wurtz something. <laughs> Goodness me, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I did a podcast episode on it, so mites in, on, on the cheese. So it's, uh, it's very similar. Alrighty, it's now time for the gallery. Uh, let's just prep that up before I get started. Uh, we got some amazing cheeses this week. Many from um, Stacy, but we've got a few others as well. Let's uh, let's just pop that up there. Go to the second monitor. There we go. So before I start, the gallery is brought to you by the uh, Curd Nerds. Uh, everybody who's watching usually sends in a photo occasionally. It's really good. Um, so this first one is from um, who's it from? It's from Anthony, uh, and Anthony says, uh, G'day, Gav. Uh, I got into my Red Leicester this week. It's probably the best pressed cheese I've made thus far. Six months in affinage, good stuff. Now, he did mention in the chat... Oh, it says, cheers, Anthony. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, he did mention it's two smaller cheeses pressed together. Now, I didn't notice it when I first saw it, but have a look here. He's done a clever thing. Where are we? See along here, there's a line. So he's actually pressed two wheels of cheese at the, you know, the initial pressing stage. Pressed two wheels of cheese together and it's matured as one. Uh, you can kind of see the line down the outside here. So yeah, very cool indeed. So, uh, and it looks like it's even got some, um, uh, some tyrosine, tyrosine uh, crystals in it it may have but it looks like it's a great cheese he says it's the best one he's made so far best pressed cheese anyway so it does look amazing mate so congratulations on that um the next cheese is from let me have a look Whoop. this is from liz and liz says hi gavin i just cut a romano which i made on the 30th of april 2023 it's slightly spongy and has holes in it and isn't the hard, dry texture I expected. Mmm. Um, it smells fine. Uh, so I ate a small sliver and it tastes a bit like Yalsberg. Uh, not at all like Romano. Is it safe? Uh, Ricky Carroll's book suggests it's not okay to eat, but the Deborah Amron Boys book, which is 200 Easy Cheeses, uh, suggests it is. Uh, I'm keeping it in the fridge and not eating it. What do you think? Uh, this, right, okay. What do I think? I think it's late blown and just hasn't got the fishy yet. You can see these are regular eye holes. Gas production, more likely to be hydrogen than carbon dioxide, especially if you didn't use, um, I didn't use a, um, a culture that, produces gas so especially with Romano you're using a thermophilic culture uh, doesn't usually produce any gas at all and it should be really close texture um, a Romano so something's gone wrong somewhere with the milk um, I would suggest that's probably all contamination somewhere so personally I would not eat it um, and you could probably feed it the pigs if you had any piggies um, but I wouldn't feed it to cats, dogs, uh, that sort of thing, because uh, you don't know what has contaminated your cheese. And unfortunately, as home cheese makers, we really don't uh, have the equipment to, which is very expensive, to test these sorts of cheeses. So unfortunately, even though it tastes a little bit like Jarlsberg, it could be a little bit Jarlsberg with a nasty surprise. So... Um, I've already told Liz this privately, so uh, it's not a shock to her. So, uh, next is a Manchego. So, this is a much cheerier photo than the Dud Romano. It's a cow's milk man Manchego, which I cut into today. It looks and tastes delicious. It's six months old, has a firm texture and a good strong bite to its flavour. And coincidentally, I made a new Manchego yesterday, which is currently in... Uh, brine before air drying for a few days uh, thanks for your continued inspiration and advice all the best Liz yeah this one's much better uh, no real signs of late blowing and a nice closed texture so well done Liz looks really good a uh, little bit of I don't know, what's this up here 
I'm not sure that doesn't look like that just looks like some sort of I don't know really slight gas production but it looks a bit strange but the rest of the texture is fine so I would eat that wouldn't have any problems with that at all okay um, the next one is from Nina and Nina says uh, hi Gavin hope you're well my husband is in Scotland with his family this week and they put on a lovely cheese board. Have you seen Crowdy cheese before? Uh, it's the cheese on the right and is rolled in oats. Uh, could be interesting to make. Uh, yes, it is interesting to make because, well, I've never made black Crowdy, but I've made the Crowdy. All right, so let's, um, can we find uh, Gab's Crowdy? Uh, here we go. Uh, on the YouTubes, we'll go to the channel page and uh, we'll go to crowd. Oh, there we go. How to make crowdy and oat cakes. So I've made, you know, both. Apparently, the oat cakes you absolutely have to have with the uh, crowdy. So I will uh, just uh, get back to that. Um, here is the recipe and link for making crowdy if you so desire. Um, so. Uh, so this is Black Crowdy that uh, uh, Nina's husband, Dan, was served. Uh, and uh, apparently, uh, the cheese in the red wax is Wensleydale with cranberry soaked in orange liqueur. Very nice. And I think this one must be a blue, maybe a Stilton or something. So that's the, that's the Crowdy rolled in oat. Looks like, they're not rolled oats. They look like um, crunchy, uh, like... Uh, What's it called? Uh, Burgoo, which is like cracked wheat, but with oats. Um, and I don't know, what's that, a Borson maybe, by the looks of it? Uh, or a Crowdy with some other flavours. But yeah, it's a nice cheese there. Lovely looking cheese platter, that one. Um, cheers, Nina. Thank you, Nina, for sending that in. Yes, we do have Crowdy, and you can go and make it to your heart's content. Uh, the next one, a uh, series of photos, is from Stacy, And uh, I had to decipher because they had no labels on the photos, but there was a big list of uh, cheeses in the email. So let's start the email. Uh, it says, uh, G'day or hello, Gavin. Uh, I've been a long time, about five years, lurker and commenter on your YouTube channel. I just love it. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, you're such a great inspiration. I'm so glad that Kim is in the clear. Indeed. I'm glad too. Um... I've made up my first line of cheeses about four years ago. I decided to share a few photos of them. Hopefully they are in time for today's show in a few hours' time. Um, I could listen to your show all day. Thank you very much. Uh, here goes, she says. I'm from upstate cow country part of New York State. I'm super blessed to have a dairy farm only three miles away where I can get fresh milk uh, to use the day of milking. They have about 200 head of Holstein uh, cows, so it's very consistent quality. I do use the low temperature long hold process to ensure, ensure safety though. Very good and wise. Uh, okay, so the photos we've got. So this is Stacy's equipment area, how she lays it all out um, and sanitizes and heats the milk directly on the stove there. So nice little setup, nice and clean, which is absolutely beautiful. There is Stacy there. This one's the uh, the mozzarella. Uh, so Stacy says, mozzarella, I was scared to try this out after hearing so many stories of it not working, but check this out. So lovely big stretch there. Nice big mozzarella ball. So fantastic. And uh, she made a caprese salad with homegrown tomatoes and basil. And by the looks of a little bit of balsamic vinegar there. So that looks special I like that a lot uh, can we zoom in a little bit there we go how nice is that homemade cheese homegrown tomatoes and homegrown basil absolutely perfect all right the next one is uh, Stacy sage Derby uh, that looks quite spectacular um, you haven't said how it tasted but it looks pretty good uh, the next one this is a uh, Toscano soaked in Shiraz. So nice firm texture there, uh, as it should be. You've got a bit of seepage from the 
the wine. Hopefully, it tasted good. It didn't, you don't really say, but yeah, I've in I've uh, what have I called it? Vino de Cabra is another version, which is uh, a goat's milk wine-soaked cheese, which I've made myself, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this one I'm hoping is uh, Colby, which says, "Oh my, so good." Uh, I think that's the Colby, and I think that's the Colby as well. I'm guessing. If, you, if I got it right, then that's fine. But yeah, good-looking cheese. A um, little bit of um, this is mechanical because it's uh, it hasn't been pressed, you know, firm enough to compress in, but still looks pretty good. The next one is uh, a cheddar in the works. Uh, so there's some cheddaring going on here with some nice big slabs of uh, curds. Uh, the next one is, this is a huge Wensleydale, biggest cheese that sadly went to my chickens because the cranberries fermented so badly. It's sad to hear. It's a great looking cheese. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. But yeah, once sometimes if the cranberries haven't been sanitized, they'll ferment with the extra sugar as well sometimes it happens and it gives a funny taste in the cheese sometimes it can contaminate the cheese as well um i used dried cranberries which i boiled uh and that actually removed a lot of the sugar which is added they're actually soaked in sugar but the cran i used unsweetened cranberries which really didn't add much flavor to the cheese but it did taste quite well and didn't ferment or anything like that the next one is a baby Swiss, I assume. Uh, it says baby Swiss, which I loved. Um, that looks really nice as well. Uh, this one here is a Havati. Uh, not sure why it developed this fissure, but it was delicious nonetheless. It's called late blowing, personally. I wouldn't have eaten it. Um, hopefully, well, you're still alive, so couldn't have been that bad. Um, but normally my advice uh, is not to eat something late blown like this. Sometimes it can be superficial. Uh, a lot of the time it's a build up of butyric acid. Now what the, um, the Dutch do, and sometimes the Spanish cheesemakers as well, they had a product, an egg white product called Lysolac. Uh, very hard to get here in Australia. Um, and this prevents late blowing. It, it kills the butyric acid before, it, sorry, the butyric bacteria before it develops butyric acid and causes the fissure. So a lot of them do use this enzyme called lysolac to prevent late blowing. Anyway, uh, moving right along, and there it is again. Uh, next one, this is a uh, triple cream. Uh, wow, I love this cheese. Yeah, I loved it too. So nice. Such a great cheese. So that looks fantastic. Uh, this one, I believe, is my second Buda Kaiser. Uh, and right there, the holes uh, from Floridanica. Yes, they will. Floridanica will produce holes or eyes. Uh, it says so delicious. Um, okay, so there's a bit of, it says my second Buda Kaiser cheese. Four and a half pounds, which is about two kilos. Uh, this one has a high fat content, probably pro which produced a super creamy texture that sticks to the knife when cut. It's amazing the holes are produced by one of the cultures I use called Floridanica. Um, yeah, so also Floridanica converts, it, it, what's it called? It's called um, uh, diacetyl action. So um, it will make the cheese buttery as well. So uh, there you go. And that's the, the end of the photos. Thank you so much. And uh, there is a question uh, from Stacy. Let me just uh, go back to my head. Um, it says here, uh, uh, I have my fresh cultures and ready to make the next cheese next Sunday. It's been far too long. Uh, indeed, you should, should make cheese all the time. I do. Um, uh, question from Stacy is, I like to make four... A four gallon cheese, oh, sorry, a lot, I'd like to make four gallon recipes for a larger cheese. A lot of recipes are for two gallons or two pounds of cheeses. 
Um, do you have a good source of a conversion calculator or chart for helping with adjusting weights, pressures, times, or for going bigger? Uh, usually, I recommend most of the cheese books I get, um, yeah, for two gallons, so four gallons is double the ingredients. Um, pressure is uh, the amount of uh, weight applied on an area which gives you pounds per square inch. So the larger the diameter of the follower that you're pressing, the more pressure you're going to add. Therefore, the bigger the cheese, the more pressure you're going to have to add. Um, so yes, there are calculators online for gauging uh, what weight you need to add to get the right amount of pounds per square inch um, or pressure onto the onto the, the pressing plate or the the follower uh, to get it pressed at the right thing. Now there is a book. Uh, do I have it here? Um, no, I must have it inside. Uh, it's Deborah Deborah Amron Boys's book, The Two Hundred Easy Cheese Recipes. No, I don't have it here. I don't know why. Um, most of the recipes in there are actually uh, 16 litres or 4 gallons of milk. So you wouldn't have to convert anything if you use the recipes out of that book. I used to grab a lot of recipes out of that book and scale them back down to 10 litres or um, 2.5 gallons. So I can, if I can scale them down, you can scale them up. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. And thanks to everybody who contributed this week for the... Um, the gallery has been fantastic. Beautiful photos from uh, everybody that sent them in. So how do you send photos to me? That's the question everybody is asking. I can tell right now. So what you do is we go to the channel page and see this here where it says, do you want to become a curd nerd? Love eating cheeses and can't get enough, blah, blah, blah. You click on this little arrow here and this pops up. Uh, and down here it says email address. So click on that and that'll show the email address to send any of the uh, any of your photos to via email. Um, so yeah, please do that. I've got lots of space in my inbox. So send through your photos. I would love to see them. Uh, you can get the same info in, um, in the iOS app as well. So, so, um, moving right along, I'm sure there are lots of other questions that we have here as well. Uh, just scrolling back. Um, Anthony says, um, I imagine if you get cheese mites to make mumlet, you never get rid of the mites. Yes, you probably would never. So when they mature it, they're only maturing the mumlets in one area. Uh, I, don't, I think that's probably the only cheese they ever make because you're right, once you get cheese mites, you're never going to get rid of them. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Robin says, the German cheese I mentioned last week had cheese mites. Yes, indeed. Uh, it was called uh, Milburn Cars. Um, yes, so that, yes, very good. I got that written down. Lucky I got my pad here that shows all the show notes that are right down. So I oh, do take notes, Robin. There you go, mate. No problems at all. Um, uh, Jim says, yes, a separate cheese cave would be advised for Mimolette. Indeed. Um, there you go. Uh, Liz says that Anthony's red Leicester looks wonderfully crumbly. Um, and Stacy says that looks awesome. Indeed, it really was. Um, uh, Monica says, can you overpress a cheese? Yes, you can overpress a cheese. Uh, usually at the initial stage, so the first pressing, a lot of people do go hard and fast, and uh, it's not quite right because when you're pressing a cheese initially, if you're overpressing it, you'll see a lot of the way is very, very cloudy that comes out. Uh, and what you're doing there, you're pressing out a lot of the fat that needs to stay in the cheese. So that's why you always do a very light pressing, the initial one, just to form the curds into a the shape that it should be. Uh, and you'll find that the first pressing usually is fairly short. Um, so yeah, and, uh, and as the cheese uh, forms its rind, you know, you slightly uh, press it a little bit longer, a little bit harder, and then the final pressing is usually its final weight. 
Uh, and during all those stages, the uh, the way should run clear-ish, uh, but not really cloudy because you know you're losing a lot of fat, and then you'll lose a lot of flavour out of your cheese. Um, Herb says fresh mozzarella is so good. Indeed, it is, mate. It is lovely. Um, uh, next question is from Jennifer. Um, Jennifer says, is that acid, butyric acid, yep, late blowing from the cows eating silage? Yes, it is. Uh, that is the main cause, Jennifer. Um, uh, next question is from Liz. I have heaps of ricotta in the fridge after making several cheeses this week. I'd love to have some new ideas for using it. So in the past, um, ricotta, I have made uh, a baked ricotta cheesecake. Absolutely fantastic. Delicious. Uh, baked ricotta, um, which is a savory dish. Uh, a little bit like a, well, I was going to say like a souffle, but it's not. Um, baked ricotta, uh, there's a recipe on my little green cheese blog. Let's have a look. Um, let's find... Uh, we'll go over to the second monitor once again. The little green cheese. If you didn't know, I've got a blog as well. Uh, baked ricotta in the search. Hey, there we go. Uh, so I made uh, baked ricotta, and this is what I did with uh, one pound or 500 grams. Don't mind the ads. Um, so here's the, it's got the the whole recipe and everything. I'll put the uh i'll put the thing in the chat for you there we go um if you haven't made it before it's it's absolutely gorgeous uh so in it it's got olive oil to grease the vessel you put it you bake it in 500 grams of ricotta two eggs um fresh garlic chives or garlic uh dried chili flakes salt and pepper uh bingo boingo it turns into the best little savory entree that you ever did taste. So there you go, some baked ricotta. There's a suggestion. Hopefully that works out for you. Uh, but cheesecake is absolutely delicious. Uh, next question is from... Um, where are we? Oh, Jennifer says, I use in a ton... Sorry, I use tons in pancakes. Uh, put it in a quiche on pizza. Yep, there's some very cool things going on there. Um, Patricia says, I suspect the files section of the Learn to Make Cheese Facebook group will have a conversion chart for pressing weight, weight follower diameter. Yes, I think you're right there, Patricia. The Learn to Make Cheese Facebook group. Let me just see if I can bring that up and put the link in as well, because I do love sharing a good link. Uh, can I get to it quickly? Let's go to the Facebooks. Not showing my personal Facebook page, of course, but let's go to Learn to Make Cheese. Here it is here. It's one of the biggest cheese-making uh, Facebook groups out there. Let's just put the link in there and let me just show it. There we go. So learn to make cheese. The t the title picture changes all the time. They put a um, oh there we go. Um, the um, uh, the yeah. So there is so much activity. Like the last post was fifty three minutes ago. So there's a person putting a picture of their cheese. Um, and yeah, some fantastic stuff. And there is a files section over here. And there are so many recipes that people are allowed to put in there. Um, links to resources. Uh, troubleshooting guides, you name it, it's all in there. So you have to apply to uh, to join. Uh, and I think uh, the going rate is about 40% of applicants actually get in. Um, and that's not because they're not uh, that, that's not because they're nasty or anything. It's because they're looking for real people, not bots and scammers. So um, people with a Facebook group of this size, like there's 50, nearly 51,000 members in this Facebook group. So. Uh, great work by all of the um, admins uh, of that group, Tracy, Rachel, um, Heather, and I think there's a couple more. 
um, all run a yeah, very tight ship there on that Facebook group. So go and join it if you haven't already. Um, uh, where are we? Becky has a question. Says, um, I made Stracino, Stracino for an Italian friend who says my flavour is nearly right, but the fe- texture is, is too firm. Uh, with small amount, if you want a jelly-like mixture, is it worth cutting the curd at all? Um, yeah, you could treat it, I suppose, like a bit like a, um, a camembert and a brie, where you just scoop off slices and don't actually um, don't actually cut the curd. Um, did I press my stracchino? Um, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, follow the instructions. Probably, yeah, if you don't cut the curds and you just scoop or ladle slices of the curd, it'll probably be the right texture for your Italian friend, Becky. Um, I use one litre of milk and the pot is a small saucepan, I think, for your cheese. Yes. So yeah, don't cut the curd. There you go. Um, Liz says, uh, I love it in quiche and pizza too. Pancakes is a good idea. This is for... Um, uh, uh, this is for the ricotta. Uh, Jennifer says, has a question. I've been cutting my rennet in half and it's working fabulously. Now I'm wondering if all my cheeses have had too much rennet. It's puzzling. Um, yeah, because you're using raw milk off your own cow, I would certainly reduce the rennet. It probably works fine. And reduce the cultures as well. If you haven't already, 25% less is probably the recommended amount. Uh, that's if you don't do... Um, Low temperature, long hold. If you do low temperature, long hold um, uh, home pasteurization, then yeah, use the full amount of cultures because most of the uh, lactobacteria killed off during that process. So it's up to you. If you're using straight raw milk, Jennifer, then yeah, add a little bit less culture probably too. If you're finding that your cheeses are, uh, are strong, too strong and maybe overbearing, then um, yeah, cut back on the, the culture. Now remember that rennet has two jobs really it's it's first initial to initially to coagulate the milk but it also uh, as the enzymes uh in the rennet help the chymosin and pepsin help to break down some of the fats and proteins during the cheese making process as well okay we've got three minutes less left uh i'm not going to get to all of the questions but um uh patricia says <laughs> Gavin, it sounds like you may need to do a 20 ways with ricotta video. I'll tell you what, good suggestion. You're full of them, honestly, Patricia. Uh, 20, I don't know if I'll have five, 20 ways, but I'll find recipes. I won't make them all myself, of course. Uh, ways with... Because uh, as per your last suggestion, the... Um, <laughs> the 15 ways with way has been a stellar success that video a lot of people liked and they like the style uh, of that video as well it's more of an information video not a how-to video um, and I've started to produce a couple of those lately as you've seen uh, and they seem to be doing well so a bit of mix and match instead of just all uh, cheese uh, tutorials how to's it's probably best to put a few technical sort of things in there and you know, info entertainment sort of ones. I've got to be a little bit less wooden when I'm presenting using the Sally prompter. I've got to practice a little bit, I think. Anyway, um, thank you so much for turning up today. Um, no super chats this week, but so much. Thank you to all of the members and the um, uh, all of the uh, patrons as well. Thank you so much for your financial support. Uh, without it, like I said, we wouldn't have much of a show. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you are not a member and you want to support the show, then you can hit the join button on YouTube or there's a link down in the description for the Patreon page. Um, and, yeah, that supports us every month. Uh, if you would also like to support us, don't forget you can pop over to um, littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Let me just uh, get rid of that That there. Thank you. Um yeah, you can pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au and pick up your cheese making supplies. We ship them all over the world. Don't forget, there's also at that site, uh, if you go to the book section in the cheese making section, you also find copies of my my paper bound version of uh, Keep Calm and Make Cheese and Keep Calm and Make More Cheese. 
and there's a 10 percent discount off the bundle uh and lots of people like i said have been buying them so uh over the last over this weekend so um, like i said i've sent out sold about 20 copies so far so i'm very happy with that uh if you haven't had a, got a copy or haven't got a paper copy then uh yeah do that we ship all over the world so uh and don't forget of course merch merch also supports the channel a little bit so you can get that at uh, merch.cheeseman.tv uh thanks for watching curd nerds and i will see you same time same place oh not the same time because uh next sunday uh at uh, what is it 2 a.m in the morning we go back an hour so there will be a time difference so just check the watch page for the live stream uh when i schedule the next one you'll know what time it is uh in your area so we will be nine hours behind you no nine no i don't know we'll be we'll be plus 10 that's what, gst plus 10 um is what we will be uh, time zone next weekend next sunday so there will be a time difference so just be aware if you haven't gone already and left the show all right see you later curd nerds have a great time have a cheesy week week and uh, don't do don't don't do anything i wouldn't do Oops, back again. Stacy did a super chat just before we finish. Oh, lucky we didn't finish it. I wonder how many people have left. Um, yeah, thank you, Stacy. I really appreciate appreciate the US five dollars, and it's the first one ever. Your first super chat. So thank you very much. Let's get the light going. Why hasn't it gone off? There we go. Let's get the curd nerd light going. Hey, thank you, Stacy. Appreciate it. All right, curd nerds. I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.